If you've followed this channel for more than 10 minutes, you've probably seen me build quite a few windmills. I almost always use stepper motors, which are a type of brushless DC motor. This is intentful, as they are, in my opinion, the right blend of efficiency and simplicity. The only difficult thing about using a brushless motor as a generator is that it produces alternating current, AC. I've talked briefly about this little backpack that I have on my current windmill, and I've referred to it as the electronics case. This is probably the number one question I get asked, so it's high time I do a video explaining it. Remember all the way back from high school physics that electricity is generated when a magnetic field, such as that of a permanent magnet, passes by a wire. The effect is amplified if the wire is coiled. The magnet passes by more wires that way. Additionally, the inverse is true. Applying a voltage differential to a wire, or more significantly, a coiled wire, will create a magnetic field. Brushed DC motors have a commutator, which is a device that switches polarity automatically as it rotates. Brushless DC motors work by creating a magnetic field that then nudges the magnets and causes the shaft to spin a little bit. Applying voltage to the different wires, and thus the different coils, at the right speed and in the right order, you can get the motors to spin quite quickly and with great torque. We power these motors with DC though, so why do they produce AC when you spin them? Imagine a graph that plots the distance between a magnet and a coil as the magnet spins around in circles. As it comes from the furthest point, the plotted line is rising, all the way until it reaches the closest possible point at which it falls until it reaches the furthest point again. This line is just a sine wave, just like alternating current. The process of converting this alternating current to direct current is called rectification. I'm going to show you some rectifying circuits that anyone can make. Let's go back to the plotted graph that I talked about. You can see that sometimes the voltage is positive, which is fine, but then later in the graph, the same wire that was just carrying the positive voltage is now carrying a negative voltage. That's no good for our purposes, as that would probably fry a lot of components. Using math, the way we might fix this graph is just by putting the sine wave function inside of a function that takes the absolute value. That way, when the voltage would have gone negative, it goes positive again. So how can we create a circuit that does this? I'm gonna show you two ways. The first is slightly more challenging, but uses cheaper components and is more intuitive. If you get confused, don't worry, because a simpler solution is going to follow. This is a diode. A diode is a component that allows current to flow in one direction, but not in the other. You are probably familiar with a light emitting diode. LEDs only allow current to flow in one direction. If I hook it up to this battery backwards, nothing happens. Current cannot flow. The one I'm showing you here is the ubiquitous 1N4001 diode. The polarity is marked by that little silver strip. The end that the strip is closer to is the direction that the electricity can flow. This is the diagram for it. They're very cheap. I bought this bag of 100 of these diodes for just over a dollar. Hopefully you're putting together where I'm going with this. Since the current can flow in one direction in the diode and not the other, we can arrange them in an array such that no matter what signal we give to the two inputs, the two outputs will always be one positive and one negative, our direct current. It's not going to be terribly stable or regulated, but we can deal with that after we build it. This next part may seem a little bit pedantic or redundant, but I just wanted to cover it because I was never formally trained in all of this. And when I was trying to do my own research, I found it very confusing. So I want to make this as clear as possible for other people who might not be electrical engineers. So what we're doing, the goal is to make something that can perform a task that is called full wave rectification. Full wave because it's using both the positive and the negative cycles of the AC signal. There is also half wave rectification, which allows the positive phase to pass through, but not the negative phase. So it just, you know, you waste it. The thing that we're building to perform the task of full wave rectification is called a full bridge rectifier. Bridge is the name of a configuration of circuit, and this circuit happens to be in a bridge configuration. It's called full because it's doing both cycles, the negative and the positive of the AC signal. Often you'll hear people just say bridge rectifier, but it's often implied that it's going to be for full phase, right? Full bridge rectifier. Also, since the motor has four wires, right? You have two pairs of coils. You're going to need to build two full bridge rectifier circuits, one for each of them. So the circuit is very easy to build. Take two of your diodes and have them such that the silver parts are both facing the same way and twist those together, okay? Just like that, you can see silver on silver. Take two more, both facing the same direction. Twist these ones so that the black parts are together. So now you have two pairs of diodes one where the silvers are touching, one where the blacks are touching. Then you're going to twist those so that they're facing each other, right? So that the silver goes to black and silver goes to black on both of those. Okay, we can see it a little bit better like this. You can see that we've got one end with the two silvers touching, one end with the two blacks touching, and then two ends where silver touches black. It's actually pretty easy to remember because the part where black touches black is the negative for the DC section, right? So black on black, negative, makes sense. The double silver is going to be the positive for the DC, and the parts where black touches silver is going to be your two AC wires. Four wire stepper motors have two coil pairings. The two wires of each set of pairings will need to go to a full bridge rectifier. If you're not sure which two of your wires are coil pairs, let me show you how to test. You can just take your multimeter and set it to resistance mode and then start probing around. The ones that are pairs should have a resistance of, you know, between 5 to maybe 15 ohms, and ones that are not coil pairs should have infinite resistance. Right, you can see that on there. There's infinite between wires one and three. Usually they're touching. 
Here's wires one and two. You can see on the multimeter down there, four ohms, five ohms, right? Perfect. So you're gonna take these two wires. Well, you're gonna need to do this twice, right? So, but take these two wires first and connect them to the part of that bridge rectifier that we just built where silver touches black. The rectification will happen pretty much instantaneously in this circuit. So something we can add to sort of debounce it so that our voltage isn't jumping all over the place is a capacitor, which acts kind of like a tiny battery. This one is rated for 220 microfarads at 25 volts. When you actually make this circuit, you're probably gonna wanna solder it. Add the capacitor to the DC positive and negative paying attention to polarity. Once you have that, make sure none of your wires are touching. Then all that's left to do is add the remaining two inputs where silver touches black and connect those each to one wire from the coil pair of your stepper motor. Here is the first one of these that I ever made. You can see the four prongs where your stepper motor wires are gonna plug into. And you can see there's two, and they're kind of hard to see, but you can see the two capacitors at least. There's two full bridge rectifiers. Now I mentioned that I had another solution that is much easier, although a little bit more expensive. It's not that much more expensive though, but it will save you quite a bit of headache if you feel like buying some of these. This is the KPB307 IC. It stands for integrated circuit. This thing is magic. It's kind of hard to see, but these inside two pins, the ones that I've bent, you just hook up your AC, you know, one of your coil pairs to, and then DC comes out the other side. It's magic. And it's about as efficient as doing it yourself with the diodes. So this thing I think was like 50 cents, but it does make your life a lot easier. And then all that's left to do from there is decide whether you want to hook your two full bridge rectifiers up in series or parallel. So this is the board that I use. Uh, this is what's in that little backpack. I have made it so that it holds two of those little KPB 307 ICs and the one that I have coming in soon, I've been redesigning it as, as I've made improvements to it, but the one that I most recently designed has a switch so that you can switch between parallel and series modes, which I think is pretty cool. So all of the stuff that I've talked about works for pretty much every stepper motor. I know a lot of people have these. This is the 28BYJ48, yeah, I think is the code for it. This one has five wires. So this cable is actually a four wire stepper motor disguised as a five wire. So the red one is only used for five volt connection and I think the other ones can sink to ground or something, but it will work the exact same way if you take blue and pink as a coil pair and yellow and orange as a coil pair. You can do the exact same thing for these little guys, but you do have to be aware that these are geared one to 63. They're good for using in small projects where you need quite a bit of torque you know, in a small package, but in terms of using them as generators, they're very hard to turn. You know, if you put a little hand crank on there, it'd be fine, but the shaft is also microscopic. So it works, it does work, it works very well. But I personally have found it a little bit more difficult to use. Although comparatively with price, I mean, it's not even a competition. These things are dirt cheap. So for that consideration, uh, these might be the victor. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions. I respond to every single comment that I get on all of my videos. I hope you learned something new from this video and I hope that you go and build some exciting things and send them to me because I love seeing you guys' projects. Thank you again for watching. Please subscribe if this video helped you out and I hope you have a wonderful day.